Okay, I'm going to start this video for chapter 6. I'm going to look at homework problem 1 to start with. Um, we've got subsurface sampling at a construction site, and we've got a unit weight of the soil at 123 pounds per cubic foot. We want to find the effective vertical stress at 12 feet deep, and then find that effective vertical stress at 12 feet deep if the water table rises to 6 feet of the ground surface. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that scenario out um, since it's given to you as a word problem and uh, not with the soil profile that we've seen in our book, but you can just go ahead and make that soil profile yourself. We know it's 12 feet deep. We know that our soil is 123 pounds per cubic foot. Um, for part A, I'll put an A here, we're looking at the effect at 12 feet below the surface. Um, so all we have to do to find that effective stress is multiply our unit weight times our height. Uh, because we don't have any water we have to deal with here. Remember the effective stress is the same thing as the total stress minus the pore pressure, but when we don't have any water, uh, we're not going to have any pore pressure that we need to subtract out, so it's they're just are really equal here. So we'll call that 123, and I'll write it this way, pounds per cubic foot for the units, and then we're going to multiply that by 12 uh, feet. And when I have this feet in the numerator and this feet in the denominator, that's going to cancel and we'll cancel out one of those so that'll become feet squared. And when I go ahead and do that math, I wind up with 1476. And I can write that as pounds per feet squared, or I could write it 1476 PSF for an abbreviation. And we know that our units um, for these vertical effective stress is always going to give me in pounds per square foot. All right, for part B, again, we're looking for our effective vertical stress. At the bottom of this layer, we've got a bit of a change in scenario here. We'll draw this in here. This time, we've got a water table, and it is six feet from the surface. So we are going to have some pore pressure here from this part of the layer that has water in it. So to handle this the way we were handling it in class, we can break this into a couple different layers. We'll call the top one sigma one, and that's the dry part. There's no water at the top. That's handled just the way we handled part A. But then we're also gonna have to have a, a sigma two part of here, which is underneath the water table. That's my wet part. And I'm gonna have to make sure that I'm subtracting out the pore pressure from that wet section. So in this case, my effective vertical stress is going to be the sum of those two uh, sections. And in this case, sigma 1, just like before, is going to be my gamma of my soil times H, which is just, this time, 123 pounds per cubic foot times 6 feet, because I'm just going halfway down. That's the only part that's dry is halfway down that. And that's 738 pounds per square foot. And then I also have a sigma 2 here, which is going to be my gamma. I'm just calling it gamma here because I don't know if it's clay or whatever. Um, but I have to subtract the gamma water from that and then multiply it by the H. If I wanted to, I could really do this like this. I could say it's gamma H, just like the first one, minus gamma water um, times the height of the water. So I just sort of like to put it this way because it saves me a step of having to do more multiplication. Remember, with your distributive property, these two are equivalent expressions. All right, so in this case, my gamma is 123 pounds per cubic foot, and I'm subtracting 62.4 pounds per cubic foot, and I'm multiplying it by that whole height of that wet layer, which is six feet. And I go ahead and put that in my calculator. Remember, when you're doing this in your calculator, you want to make sure you do what's in the parentheses first. So 123 minus 62.4, and then I'm just going to multiply that by 6. And that gives me 363.6. So put that in here. And that's pounds per square foot. 
and then to find my effective stress at point B, I'm just going to add up that sigma 1 and sigma 2, which is 738 PSF plus 363.6 PSF. And when I add those together, I get a total of 1,101.6 PSF. So let's just take a look at what we got here for answers. When we did uh, part A, we wound up with a higher effective stress than we did for part B. And if we think about it, that makes sense because part A was totally dry. We didn't have to subtract out any effect of the water, any poor pressure. But part when we're going to part B at point B here underneath uh, the water table having risen, we have to subtract out that water, um, gamma water times th six feet of height, and so we are going to wind up with a lesser effective stress.